Good evening all and welcome. Tonight we're going to be delving into the world of cryptids. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment if you enjoy the video and a like. It really does help the channel and goes a long way. Thank you all so much. So, get comfortable and let the darkness take control. During 1999, I worked briefly as a vacuum cleaner salesman. And yes, the job was as terrible as it sounds, which required very late nights as I was often at customers' homes until around 9pm before having to go back to head office to check out and then drive home. There'd be times I wouldn't be getting home until at least midnight or 1am. I was working late in this particular night, and I was on the home stretch around 10 minutes away when my old, crappy, cheap Ford Fiesta began to overheat. I knew the car wouldn't make it home, so I had no choice other than to pull over to a lay-by. My hometown is literally the last town before there are just mountains and forests for countless miles. As I pulled into the mountain parking area with steam pouring my engine, a white humanoid figure ran directly in front of my headlights and sprinted from the edge of the clear side of the parking area and into the forest on the other side. It had no clothes, features, genitals or hair, just a white figure with two arms and legs that appeared almost luminous and reflective in my lights. I say I crapped myself, but it's a bit of an understatement. My eyes popped out my sockets when it ran in front of me, but then I realised that I was stuck in a dead car in a deserted mountain lay by in the middle of the night, with no mobile phone signal, as this was back in the days when mobile phones were just starting to become popular, but large chunks of country were missing from network coverage. I had no choice but to just sit around an hour until my car cooled down, as it gave up the ghost pretty much the second I pulled in. So I sat in the car alone, staring directly into the forest where the thing I saw had run to. No weapon, no way to contact anyone to let them know where I was, and no passing traffic to possibly flag down. During my wait in the car, I obviously started to wonder what I'd seen. I knew for a fact I had actually seen something, as it was not a trick of the light. That much was clear. I discounted sheep, horse, foxes, or any other animal that populated the Welsh mountains, as I was certain it was a two-legged humanoid creature in shape, with a roughly human head, body, arms and legs, with all the right proportions. The obvious answer would have been that it was some very strange man who, for whatever reason, was wearing white, but since we're miles away from the nearest home, and I was the only car around, I thought it very unlikely someone would have spent hours walking through thick forest just to hang out at a parking area in the middle of the night in a forest wearing a unitard. Since I could rule out possible animals or humans, I had to consider the alternative, which isn't a nice thing to think about when you're stuck in a broken down car, thinking that the creature outside could very possibly be a ghost. But still, they don't tend to run from people as far as I'm aware. I'm not sure if there's some kind of Welsh version of a Wendigo, but I had to categorise this encounter as that. There was always talk of satanic rituals and witches practising in the forest when I was a kid, and also of illegal bare-knuckle fights where people had been killed and buried to cover up the crime. But I didn't think much of it at the time and always wrote it off as superstition or rumour. But now I'm not so sure. Eventually, my car cooled down enough for me to limp back home. No one believed me when I told them what I saw, and were adamant to tell me that what I saw was a sheep running on two legs. I swear, the creature I encountered was something else. I've been in the forest many times since, camping, biking and hiking, but I've never seen anything like that again. But whenever I go there, I'm always aware of the possible presence of what I now believe to have been the Goatman. I have a story that happened to me and my friends. To set the scene, we were on a Boy Scout slash camping trip. There were 20 to 30 of us, and we were in a little cabin thing with windows on the front and back. There were wooden tables all around the area. The adult cabin with the bathroom was about an eighth of a mile down a gravel road in the dark. There was obviously a buddy system because it's Boy Scouts. So it's around midnight and everyone had been telling scary stories, like normal camping trips. Well, I had to go to the bathroom and make my friend come along. He said, sure. We got our knives as we knew there were bears in the woods and it made us feel safer. 
and went to the bathroom and began to walk back. This is where it got scary. I felt an instinctual fear and I looked to my friend and he had the same look as me. We begin to walk a little faster and unfold our pocket knives. I then turn around and see it. The thing appeared similar to a cat, maybe six feet tall and was kind of on its hind legs, but hunched over. I freaked the heck out and started running. My friend sees it too, so we sprint back to the cabin and it began making a moaning slash howling noise somewhere between the two and followed us slowly. We pound on the door and the guys let us in. We tell them what we saw and they actually believed us. So we lock the front door and look at the back door, which had no lock. So we pushed a table up against it and had a kid there with his knife for safety. We draw the blinds on all the windows and sat there with the lights on. Then we see eyes outside of the window without blinds. We're all crapping ourselves and the thing slowly walked to the back door. We heard it bump against it, then it left. We thought we were all going to die. No one slept. When the adults came to wake us up, we told them and they laughed and said we were making it up. We know very well what happened, yet no one will believe us. This story happened in Pennsylvania in the Allegheny National Forest in around 2009. I was hitchhiking the East Coast at the time and made my way there. And I ran into a buddy I had met in Florida a few months before, and she was there with a friend. So we all camped together. Anna and I decided to camp along the main trail to get away from all the thousands of hippies. The main trail goes from a camp, the parking lot, to the main circle in the heart of the gathering, and it's a few miles of trekking. We get out there, alone besides the main trail traffic. It was dusk, and we were having heavy talk about spirituality and not hippie stuff, when we decided to go down to the main circle to grab some food. We were standing up, and I began to stomp out the little twig fire that we had, when Anna said, Do you hear that? I stopped and listened and it sounded like someone walking in the forest towards us. At this moment, some people on the main trail had stopped and were smoking cigarettes and were talking amongst themselves, oblivious to us. We listened to the footsteps quickly moving to see that we couldn't see anything. The footsteps kept going and there was nothing there. My mind was misfiring trying to figure it out. We could actually see the footfalls of the twigs snapping and the leaves moving. Whatever it was, went right up to these people on the trail and seemed to slow its pace, like it was checking them out. They were totally oblivious to it while talking in the circle. Then it came right up to me and Anna, slowed down, like it was checking us out. It wasn't scared. The entire time Anna was fumbling with a keychain, she had millions of things attached to it when she finally found this little flashlight and shone it and went, Hey! Whatever it was that was feet away, bounded off up the hill very fast. If I had wanted to run after it, I couldn't have. It was very fast, like the steps became machine gun steps. Anna and I took off down the hill very panicked. To me, it sounded like a child speed walking. The steps were short but fast. This really happened, and Anna refused to speak about it after. She was very afraid, and I had to go back alone to pack up the camp. I'm 50 years old now, but this happened to me when I was between 18 and 20, in the mid 80s to 90s. Me and a few of my other friends owned this huge, huge, huge bar with three levels of floors and I would always have my own booth to DJ in the whole bar. Anyway, the bar would open up at nine at night, especially this time, and didn't end until two or three. I'd also like to add that I love nature and down in Alabama, especially where I lived, there was a bunch of woods. So I would always walk home after the party was over. Like I was saying, the parties would start at nine and end at two. And after the security guards there would start cleaning out the place, which would be full of people. I remember packing up, getting ready to leave. 
I would always get offers from my friends or even females I met at the night if I needed a ride home, since I rarely drove to the bar because, like I said, I really like to walk especially in the night, hearing some of the late night bugs. Water flowing from streams and bobcats snarling at the night. As always, I thought I would decline on their offers, but would thank them anyway. Tonight, I did just that and was on my way home. I would always take this route, and I still remember it to this day. It was a long street passing both sides of the woods. I can't remember what the woods were called, but for probably any ordinary person, these types of woods would scare the crap out of them even during the day. The detail, just to give you a picture. During the day they're creepy, but at night they look something like out of a horror film. But I remember walking like usual, and knew this route off the back of my hand, and so I knew that I was 15 minutes away from turning onto another street, which is where the woods would end up on one side, and lead me straight to my house. Well, as I'm walking, I start to hear a rustling. I'm walking on the left side of the street, and the rustling is coming from the opposite side. This was normal to me. I heard them often as I walked down this street full of woods, but this time it was different. It wasn't the ordinary sound of a snake slithering or a bobcat moving. They were much heavier. The sound was more rustling, as if you were rubbing your hands across leaves or the wind blowing through the leaves, but the air was still. I still walk and analyze the sound. Half of me is saying, well, it's probably just a human, but the other half is on edge. I'm appearing to seemingly approach the sound. As the sound gets to a certain point, I start to turn my gaze the way of it, and I kid you not, whatever this thing was had the trees moving like they were on the verge of falling over. I was kind of scared at this point and tried to pick up my pace, but as I take one more glance back at the sound, I see it. This is what I would describe as even a fearless man's worst nightmare. I stopped in my tracks when I see it. What now was right across the street from me, only a few feet back, were two pairs of red shot glowing eyes. As I start to analyze more what I see, it's standing at least 10 feet tall, and the feet were like half octopus, half man, because his legs just looked like tentacles. Its body was something out of this world. His head was something different entirely. I could say it was a bit like Predator, but instead of a worm, it just had tentacles. I can't begin to describe the fear that filled my body at that moment, and I've had nightmares about it since. We both gazed at each other for what felt like eternity until I snapped out of it. I came back to the world, and as soon as I did, I ran with my head. Looking back at this thing for five seconds before I only looked forward, I ran and I ran and I ran. I was so scared that I ran into a really long driveway on the other side of the street, but I had run a little distance, and this thing was now a quarter of a mile back. After I reached the top of this person's driveway, I started banging on the door until an overweight 50-year-old white man came too. I knew he had just woken up because he looked like it, and it was probably three going on four. So I was kind of expecting a half-annoyed, half-furious reply. But the man looked at my face, saw my expression, and he knew I'd seen something very unusual. He asked if it was all right, and still in shock, I managed to tell him what I saw. He said okay and got me inside, had me sit down, and stay put on the couch while he went to get something. A minute later, he came back with a shotgun. After that, we both hopped into the car, and he told me to guide me the way, where I'd seen it. I was too scared, but the damage it did to the trees was still visible. I don't think the man believed me yet, because I recalled saying, well, kid, you sure you haven't seen too many horror films lately? Maybe your mind was playing tricks on you. I told him I knew what I saw, and it couldn't have been fake. I remember driving back up to his house. He said he was gonna drop me off. He just had to get something. I think it was his wallet. But I remember going in through the house, coming out of the back of his house, motioning for me to get out and take a look at something. I got out and proceeded to take me to his backyard, which was also his farmyard. There were five pigs, a chicken coop, three cows, and there were five cows though. He showed me what happened to the two a little while back. The bodies were badly decomposed. 
The whole bodies were gone, the only thing that was left were the head, bones and neck. Even the head, well, the eyes were gone with a mark. Both of their heads had it. I was frozen in place. I guess he believed me. Anyway, after that he took me home. Me and the man spoke on the way home, but no one did bring it up. I guess he tried to take his mind off it as I did. He dropped me off and the last words were, Hey bud, try not to travel alone in the woods no more, because you don't know what's out there, before giving me a nod. And I just said thank you, sir. When I got home, I didn't sleep for the rest of the night, or the night after that. And if I hadn't have taken sleep medicine, I probably would have stayed up the night after. But anyway, I would suffer from nightmares for that thing. Now I just get the image of it lingering in my head, unable to forget. I used to live in Georgia. When I was starting sixth grade, the bus stop I waited at usually had four to five kids there. But this one morning it was just me and Baba. That was his nickname. It was really quite a foggy day and was just really gray in the late fall of the morning. I said good morning. And when I got there, I stood by his side. We both were just staring into the wall where the woods started across the road and we were both quiet. After a few minutes, I see this enormous bird fly out of nowhere. It was enormous and black. I thought it was a vulture, but it was so big from how far we were. It was just beyond the tree line into the woods. It was about 50 to 60 feet. It hovered and flapped its wings twice. It was a bit like watching a cartoon. It just disappeared as it flew behind a tree. I was standing there for minutes and I was like, what the hell did I just witness? Did I just imagine that? Bubba breaks the silence and says, did you see that or am I just crazy? I exploded like, what the hell? As we were trying to discuss what happened. I was young, but I wasn't stupid. I was aware of how big birds could be even at that age. I'd seen big birds before, but this huge wingspan was freakish. We tried to brush it off. What the hell was it? I was new to Georgia, but Bubba grew up there. And I could see the look in his eyes when he knew that this wasn't right. About a year ago, I was out back with my family. It was around eight and the sun was setting. We lived in our farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. The closest neighbor was far away and something down the field kept catching my eye, but I ignored it at first. My sister saw it too and kept looking out towards the trees. She was getting freaked out about it. My mum said to go investigate, so me and my sister started walking across the field towards the tree line. Big mistake. It's hard for me to describe. This was the most terrifying thing that has ever happened to me. I didn't see it at first, and I didn't understand why my sister was so scared until we were about a hundred yards away. When I saw this creature, it was tall, probably eight or nine feet tall, white, humanoid, with an elongated head and no face. It had long arms and picked around the trees. We stopped in our tracks. We couldn't tell what it was. It took a few steps further out of the trees and swayed back and forth at me like a praying mantis. Me and my sister ran screaming back to the house where my mum stood jaw dropped. She saw it too. I've never been so scared in my life. We grabbed the binoculars and watched this terrifying creature peeking in and out of the tree lines, spying on us. My grandma thought we had a wild imagination. The sun was almost gone now. It was getting really dark. And the darker it got, the more it moved back and forth along the trees. It was terrifying. So we went in for the night and locked everything up tight. I couldn't sleep that night. I was hearing scratchings on the roof and at one point a very loud bang from the barn. I was very afraid I would wake up to my animals missing. The next morning, my grandma asked if we heard the loud bang outside that night. She ended up taking my grandpa with her on her morning walk. I have no idea what it was and to this day, it still haunts me. I'm from Argentina, and in the northern parts of the country, 
There is a thing that we call almamula. It's supposed to be like a black and burned skinny thing with chains. And you could hear the chain sounds and you'd know the creatures around. I had a friend from the barrio who was traumatized by the almamula that attacked his cousin when they were out in the wilderness. At night, they were going back home. The creature opened his cousin up in front of him, like sliced his stomach or something like that. And the fact his cousin was killed is true. I don't know the rest of the story, but he legit was so scared to death every time he listened to the sound of chains clanging. We always took the piss out of him because of it and used the sound of chains to frighten him. But when we saw how scared he got, you know, we knew it was serious. I was talking to my grandfather, who lives on a farm in Argentina in Patagonia. It was my father's birthday, and we celebrated it in our town, next to my grandfather's farm. I took him home in my truck, and the tree-lined boulevard that precedes his house. Something like a noemul crosses us on the road, which would be like a deer in English. Well, this is normal. What was not so normal is that the deer walked on two legs, which of course led to panic. I slammed on the brakes. The deer stared at us and kept on running on two legs. I went back on the road due to the desperate request of my grandfather, and the old man did not want to return to the farm after that. He said that he was cambia pieles, which would be very similar to the Navajo skinwalker. But in the Mapuche mythology, he is not a witcher, but rather a spirit that looks for weak vessels. My grandpa said surely he was looking for him to take over his body. So he stayed with us until he died three years later. And the farm was sold after this. At around 3 a.m. last night, my girlfriend came home from an event and we got pretty hungry. So we started making late night snacks in her kitchen. There's a big window there that's above the sink in which you're able to get a viewing of the side of her house and the side gates of the neighbors. At night, you can't really see much because there aren't any porch lights and the street has very few posts. So the only light that can be seen outside is the moonlight from the neighbor's window. We decide to stay up for a few more hours because why not? So I started making some coffee for her and while she went to fix herself up in the restroom. Here is where things start to get strange. I grabbed a spoon so I could scoop some sugar into my coffee and noticed a faint blue circle on my jacket, a red hoodie. As soon as I noticed it completely, it was gone. I looked outside as there weren't any lights on and the only thing I could see through the window was the entire kitchen because of how bright the kitchen lights are. I tried replicating the blue light with the spoon because I thought maybe something had reflected off it or something else in the kitchen and onto my shirt, but I couldn't. And I wasn't facing anything blue either. And after that, everything was normal until this morning. My girlfriend's mother came home earlier this morning complaining about cookies on the floor near her room. And she began blaming the cat and dog. But both of them were asleep in the room with us the entire night with the door closed. Her room is currently in the midst of a renovation. So our first conclusion was one of the workers did a piss poor job cleaning whatever snack they were eating while working. However, upon further inspection, my girlfriend's sister realized that the cookie pieces on the floor were from a cookie container inside her room, one that she hadn't opened for months. Now, it sounds like it could have just been a crazy coincidence that the workers had been eating the exact same cookies that her sister had in her room. But what's even stranger is that there were also crumbs around my girlfriend's cookie container on her dresser, as if someone had come in and eaten them. Her door was locked. And even if it wasn't, it's extremely unlikely one of the workers would have come into her room while she slept because the dog would have barked at anyone coming. We discussed this with my girlfriend and she tells us that last night she saw something blue moving outside the same kitchen window. She didn't tell me because I get anxious easily and thought I wouldn't be able to sleep because of me being on high alert. She says that it really looked like a blue wing. With all of this, I can't help but wonder if we were visited by the Fae last night. I've heard that they're attracted to sweet things and stuff like that. I've also heard they appear differently to people. I am convinced last night encounter must have been that. 
because a few years ago while tripping on shrooms, my friends and I were looking for our car in the complete darkness when we were returning from our hiking trail. On our way up, I saw what appeared to be a firefly to my knowledge, and fireflies never appear where I'm hiking. It was green and it glowed with a very faint glow. I tried swatting it and then it vanished into thin air, and it looked very similar to the blue thing I saw last night. So what do you guys think? Was it the Fae? Does anyone have any advice or experiences of their own to advise me on what it could have been? I just finished up outside working and decided to go into the backyard to see what was going on because I thought I heard a noise. The back fence is at least eight feet tall and it is lit from a street light in the opposite side of the fence. And when I walked back there, I saw a pair of eyes looking back at me from a head that was shaped very large. As soon as I set eyes on it, it ducked down from the fence and I heard a very loud, beefy running sound in the other direction. I don't know what to make of it because I live in Portland, so Sasquatch isn't even a thought out here. So I decided to share it with you guys to see if anyone has ever had a similar experience. And it couldn't have been human size because it would have been the world's largest head it was probably three quarters the size of a tire. About a month ago, I went camping with two of my buddies. We went to my favorite spot atop a small ridge. In my area, camping is only legal with permits at designated camping sites. So I illegally go camping off trail and try to leave no trace so that no one gets mad at me. The day went normally and I got to enjoy a nice view with the beginning of fall colors. One night, I came and settled in under a large rock overhang, and one of my buddies set up his tent right in front of me. The other set up a bit behind us since there was little room. After maybe an hour of trying to sleep, the wind began picking up. Since we were at the top of a ridge, it got pretty noisy after a while with the leaves rustling. This whole time, I was staring behind the right side of my buddy's tent, simply because it was right in front of my field of view. Suddenly, the wind picked up again, and for a split second, I looked away from the spot I had been staring at. When I looked back, I saw a tall gray shape take a step to the right. I distinctly heard the sound of the step, but didn't hear any other noise after that. Even though the fire was going, it was too far to get a good look, so I only remember that it was vaguely humanoid. The color reminded me of my buddy's gray hoodie that was in the tent. So much so that I thought it was him taking a leak. I was spooked so I called his name but his voice answered me from inside the tent. He got out and I told him what I saw. We both crapped ourselves and it took hours until I finally went to sleep. I've settled on it just being my imagination or a night hiker since there is a house not too far from my campsite and I did hear voices at one point in the night that were 100% human. What I'm asking is if anyone's ever heard of any grey creatures or anything like that near where I live. And I wanted to hear all your thoughts if you're from the tri-state area or have been there and have ever experienced anything like this. In the late summer of 2018, my wife's cat of 15 years finally wound up passing away. He had been with her since she was 11 and his loss was incredibly hard on the both of us. We lasted about a week before we wound up taking a trip to our local shelter to just spend time with the animals. When we got there, they had a few cats set up in a little mobile play cage on display. Almost immediately, one of the cats began throwing itself against the plexiglass doors to her cage when she saw us. We walked over and she was desperate to get to us. And when the volunteer opened her door, she leapt into my arms, being suckers and feeling oddly attached. We took her home that day. We named her Nala. She was a rescue and had apparently been starved and mistreated by her previous owners and had serious health concerns that had been plaguing her. She was incredibly timid around all of the staff, but not around all of us, which they commented on at large. At home, she wasn't scared at all. She crawled out of the cage that we bought her home in, curled up in the bookshelf next to where we sit, and just settled in there. 
She even slept with us and ate with us without worry. It was the damnedest thing that either of us had seen. Soon after, we started noticing odd little things about the house. Things would go missing only to show up later. Things we had thought lost for months suddenly showed up in places they shouldn't have. Occasionally, I would see Nala walk by me in the kitchen towards the bathroom, only to look in the living area and see her still in her cat tree. I brushed off a lot of these instances as me simply not paying enough attention, because as much as I believe in the paranormal, some things are just too out there for me to believe in. It wasn't until my wife started to confide in me that she was noticing these things, because she had begun to feel crazy, that we started to piece together what was happening. She had been having the same experience as me, and they were happening a lot more frequently around her, when for me it was only every other week. It was a couple of times a week for her. Backtracking. My wife works as a security guard in a government factory, night shift, on the weekends. I've been unemployed for a while, and I'm just getting settled living here in Canada, as I transplanted from the US in February of 2018. Also, I'm a night owl and prefer to sleep during the afternoon, and me and the wife would chat over Discord during her downtime between patrols of the factory. Leading up to the winter months, there are a few things that in hindsight really stand out. I felt watched occasionally by something in the living room of our apartment. Not malicious, just watched in the late evenings. The wife was having doors blow open that should have been too heavy to. Things would go missing from her office, particularly the cinnamon candy she eats all the time. I would notice that there would be cats and foxes and usually small baby ones hanging around our apartment building. And when I approached and tried to pet them, they dart around the corner and seemingly vanish. My wife would find small paw prints in the mud on her patrol, see things moving on the cameras that looked like the same small animals I was seeing. The weirdest thing was being my wife would see a kitten out in the snow and when she went to investigate, it would vanish into thin air, leaving no tracks. We felt like we were getting increasingly more and more crazy until one night in early January of 2019. That night, the wife was sure she'd seen a fox on the cameras and went to find it, only to find little paw prints in the snow that she then followed around to the back of the factory. There was a small, cleared patch of snow near one of the corners that had little bits of green plant growth that felt oddly warm. She was messaging me about this, freaking out, excited that she may have found where the kitsune lives, as I was in the kitchen making some toast. I didn't know what possessed me to do this, but I felt like I should head out onto the balcony of our apartment, and when I did, I noticed that the stuff there had been moved. We had a few boxes, an old cat tree, an exercise bike, and some tarp out there that had been piled into a corner out of the wind. And as I was looking at it, I realized there was a little area near the bottom that acted like a tunnel and led to the interior of the cat tree like a burrow, and the entire space was oddly warm. I was in my bare feet on the concrete balcony, and my feet weren't cold. We kept messaging about it as my toast finished. I ate it and thought that I should leave a tiny bit of the cinnamon raisin bread out. I took it on a plate outside, left it near the tunnel to the burrow, and on this day, I don't know what possessed me to say it, but I said out in the open, empty night, hey, if there's a kitsune who's been playing out here with my wife at work, you're welcome to stay. We'll call you Cinnamon since you like it so much. So feel free to come inside if you want, it's warmer, and there's lots of hiding spots in the room. And then I went back inside. The next morning as my wife was leaving, the cafeterias on site were complaining that an entire tray of almost 40 raw cinnamon rolls were missing from the fridge, and no one had been there at night. The door blew open once, but that was it. The toast I left was eaten, and the plate was drawn into the tunnel, as if it had been dragged in. The entire apartment felt safer, and watched over, it was very strange. As the rest of the time went on and on, throughout 2019, we'd come to accept that we weren't crazy. We'd noticed Nala's eyes were being different. 
She would purr different. Something would feel different. It was at this point that my wife's nightmares became less of a problem. As a sudden rogue fox would appear in her dreams to protect her and ward off whatever evils were ailing her mind, she'd curl up next to me when I felt anxious or upset and just lay there and let me pet her until I felt better. We felt really blessed to have her and made sure to leave offerings whenever we had something. Things continued much this way until this month, March of 2020, and we felt increasingly uncomfortable throughout the last two weeks of February, like something was amiss and wrong. And Cinnabon had been oddly on edge, hanging out in the bedroom more, especially by the windows. In the areas around our apartment, we'd noticed more dead animals showing up. Skunks, rabbits, and squirrels would be left on the side of the road, dead, with no major blood or viscera laying around, just bone, skin, and fur. It was by Sunday the 8th that things got scary. It was sometime in the early morning, perhaps 4 or 5 a.m. There was that dull blue light you get from the moon on really clear nights. All of a sudden, the room was lit up with this awful azure blue light from the window. We were laying down reading, and me and the wife both felt seriously uncomfortable and utterly entranced by this light. We both were silent and felt like we shouldn't move or make a noise and just laid there. I didn't move or flicker, or change in intensity, or colour or hue. It was dead silent, not a single sound, and then after 15 minutes, we heard a kind of disgruntled mumbling, and then Sinman bursts into the room as the light disappeared. She looked on edge, fur standing straight up. It passed and we kept talking about it, but we didn't think anything much more about it, just another odd instance in our lives. Then last night, Monday the 9th of March, we're both sitting in the room, window open, fan going, and Cinnamon was with us. It was around 11pm when we heard this god-awful noise and quickly shut the fan off to listen. It sounded like a mix of metal on brake pads and the sound of a fire sputtering out. It's the best I can describe it. Immediately, Cinnamon looked on edge and stared up at the window before settling in and staring up at it. Steadily, the noise got louder, then changed. Now it sounded like hollow objects that resonated being drugged across the ground and knocked against things, mixed with the sound of bass-boosted stretching rubber and the wind was howling. This continued for a solid 30 minutes before we both felt something leave and the atmosphere get physically lighter and we breathed easier. Cinnamon then laid down and promptly fell asleep, breathing heavy and looking exhausted. It was only then we realised there was no other noise. It was deathly silent, no birds, no scuttling animals, no cars. The entire time it was wind and these horrifying noises. I wasn't sure what was going on or what we were experiencing, but it feels scary. Things were quiet for a day or two. Nothing too terribly sketchy at all, until we had a realization one night. I mentioned it before, but when night shift people were up cooking food on Thursday and have a realization that one of the streetlights has gone out, which isn't unheard of. It's one down the street from us and two houses down. In general, this street is pretty poorly lit, so this isn't unheard of. But I had an inkling of what about the street up from us? So I headed out to our balcony and looked, and sure enough, both streetlights on the street were out. Odd. The next night, another goes out, then another and another. It's almost a ritual to check the streetlights around 3am just to see. And finally, last Monday, each and every one was dark. As we're coming back from shopping that day, we see an ambulance pull onto our street. We live across from an assisted living apartment for the elderly, and this happens a ton. Except the lights this time are on. There's no siren. They pull all the way down to the end of the street, park in front of one of the elderly apartments, and then head inside with a stretcher. Up until then, all major activity had stopped. No lights at night, no weird noises, nothing at all besides the continuing dead animal corpses that a few of our friends had mentioned as well. Tuesday night was fine, Wednesday was fine, but the air felt heavy. Already tonight is a crap show. Just about 20 minutes ago, I had the most bizarre noise echoing through the apartment from outside, and I'm struggling to actually describe it. It was like hoofbeats, but instead of being bassy and echoey, it was trebly and higher. It was like three sets of things making noises in rapid succession. 
shortly off rhythm from each other, making it like slap, 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 and it lasted for about 30 seconds before ceasing. I woke up my wife who didn't hear it, but thankfully our roommate was home at the time and they did hear it, but assumed it was a weird effect in the music that they were listening to. Cinnamon was in the room again as well, and looked very tense and on edge as it was happening, but seemed to let it go and relax again. I don't know what to make of all this. I don't even know what I'm looking for. I just need to get this off my chest. All these strange things that are happening. Hey guys, it's Moore here. Thank you so much for listening. I really hope that you enjoyed tonight's video. If of course you did, you can let me know in the comments section down below. It really does mean a lot. So thank you all. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, thank you as well to my members and patrons whose names can be seen on screen. Your help really, your support really means a lot and it goes a long way, so thank you. I do upload exclusive stories every once in a while on there, so if you'd like to um, have a listen to some of those, you know what to do. But until then, thank you so much. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.